Okay, hello to everyone and welcome uh, to our uh, ninth webinar already on education and training in the space sector. Um, the main objective of this meeting would be uh, the importance and significance of the EU large scale partnerships. Uh, we are privileged to have with us today experts from uh, the Commission, um, from the regional level, regional representatives and from the academia um, to discuss um, the, um, uh, this thematic. But before I invite uh, the speakers today, I would like to present shortly what is Nereus about, because I see new uh, participants in, in these webinars, but really shortly, and then I give the floor to, to the speakers. Uh, and also to explain why for Nereus education training is, uh, is valuable. Before I start, I will share the presentation, and please, for those who are not speakers, uh, remove the camera uh, to ensure a good uh, connection. And, and also, please uh, mute yourselves. Um, then, in, during the debate, um, uh, we will uh, uh, give you uh, the floor. Okay, uh, I hope. Can you see my slide? Yes. Let me see. Give me one moment. Okay, um, so Nereus is a, is a space organization. So you just see the PowerPoint, right? Because in my screen, uh, I see multiple documents. This is why I ask. Um, this is not a full screen presentation. Okay, but you just see the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, then let's let's move on uh, quickly. Uh, so here it's the second slide. Sorry, I have some issues. Uh, so Nereus, for those who are not aware, it's a space organization and we work uh, for matters of regional space uses. We promote the benefits of uh, space technologies for regions and their citizens and the use of space and its applications also at an EU level. Um, we work through uh, three pillars, advocacy, political dialogue, interregional collaboration and technological trends. In our website, we share more information about each of these um, uh, pillars. Uh, what it's important to emphasize here uh, so I go here, is that when we talk about uh, the use of space, um, uh, we need to keep in mind that um, uh, we share, we are interested in um, the information received from the satellites. Um, I think... Yeah, I have, there is an issue with the, with the slides. So what I will do is that I will keep just one slide. Uh, yeah, and then I will continue speaking anyway. It won't last very long. Um, so the, the, the use of satellite data, it's quite important, especially for a public administration. Um, however, um, in, in order uh, to be able to understand those images, we need a workforce, a strong workforce um, to understand uh, how to use this data, how to develop software, uh, what are the skills needed actually, and this is where education training uh, plays an important role. Uh, and Nereus works with these member regions um, to explore this process and also to see how regions can, benef uh, can benefit and can develop these necessary skills um, for, the, for, the, for, the space, uh, for the use of space. Uh, we are a network of 23 EU regions, but we also have 34 associate members. And the majority of these members, uh, it's not just companies or research or um, space agencies, but universities as well. So, uh, and research centers. So the academic element uh, is really strong in our network. 
uh, just a small comment that uh, we work on the region, the regional level, local and regional level. So we address uh, the level next to the national state, and we emphasize the regional dimension uh, into the context of the European development uh, policies. Um, uh, before I close, I would like to emphasize that Nereus uh, was a partner in the past in many EU large scale um, education training partnerships. I don't know if you see the slide now with EO4GEO. EO4GEO is one of them and uh, space for geo it's the continuation of this project. Milva will speak uh, more about this uh, later. On, uh, a few minutes uh, later. Of course, we are also partners in another education training project, uh, Universe. Uh, more information you can also read uh, on our website. And I think that's it uh, from my from my side. I will not take more of your of your time. Um, what I would like um, to emphasize now is that today's webinar is focused, as I said in the beginning, on the large scale skills partnership under the European Commission Initiative Pact Pact for Skills. And um, today we want to discuss how these partnerships support the implementation of the main EU space strategies. Um, so we will have the, our discussion today, we will also have a policy context. Um, now I have the pleasure, I will not take more of your time, I have the pleasure to welcome uh, to our panel Maria Vittorio Dinzo. Uh, who is a policy officer at European Commission um, and the point of reference, I would say, for this uh, EU training education um, uh, project, uh, as I mostly see it in all of these uh, nice initiatives. So, um, uh, Mavi, uh, let us know more about these partnerships and why do you think um, they are an asset for the EU agenda and the next uh, generation? Uh, before you start, I want to remind to the audience that um, we will have also a, a chat with you. So, please feel free to share your uh, comments or questions in the chat and I will uh, uh, communicate them with, uh, with the speakers. The floor is yours, Mavi. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. Can you hear me well and uh, can you see my slides? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, it's always, we're always trying to uh, build bridges with all the uh, stakeholders and uh, because we know that uh, skills require mobilization of all the actors, uh, including the regions. I particularly welcome and I thank you once again for the uh, for inviting the Commission to participate at this uh, uh, round table. My name is uh, Maria Vittoria Dinzeo. I'm uh, working in the European Commission DG Defis in the unit in charge of innovation, new space and space defense. And as you rightly pointed out, I've been following and I've been in charge of the skills dossier for uh, some time now. So uh, I will, uh, my presentation today uh, is, will be mainly focused on a, a bit of a policy uh, landscape and uh, why uh, skills are uh, so uh, important, well, why does it work, uh, uh, to advance uh, our uh, strategy for, uh, for, um, for space. Uh, our space priorities. So, first of all, uh, maybe this is something that you're all aware, but in the State of the Union address, that uh, President von der Leyen did in 2022, uh, she declared uh, 2023 uh, as the European Year of Skills. The European Year of Skills uh, kick-started officially this year uh, in, uh, on the uh, Day of Europe, uh, 9th of, uh, of May, and it will run for one full uh, calendar year. Uh, and obviously, within this year time frame, uh, a number of uh, activities aimed at uh, upskilling, reskilling, and uh, education are expected to uh, to take place, including for for space uh, in in the space sector. But obviously, before uh, the uh, president address uh, in 2020, the uh, Commission had already uh, adopted 
uh, an updated European skills agenda that happened in, uh, in, uh, in July uh, 2020, uh, because we know that the right skills are important for the EU economy, both in the context of the green uh, and digital transition, but obviously also for the recovery from, uh, at that time, we were in a pandemic uh, situation. So that's why uh, there was an urge to update the skills agenda, uh, taking into consideration the new uh, economic and uh, social trends. So that's why in July 2020, we adopted the uh, European uh, Skills Agenda that focused on skills development, obviously in synergies with the uh, vocational education and training recommendation and European education area, with a view to create a coherent education and training policy at European level. And of course, uh, as I said before, we know that uh, the skills challenge needs cooperation and partnership from all actors of, uh, of the uh, ecosystem. And for this reason, the European Skills Agenda, uh, we proposed a pact for skill uh, as a flagship action to mobilize and incentivize uh, various private and public stakeholders, so from companies, regional authorities, uh, uh, vet providers, social partners, sectoral organization to take concrete actions for the upskilling and reskilling of people and encourage stakeholders when possible to pool resources, build cooperation and scale up their action to support uh, the workforce in the whole region, the sector, value chain and uh, ecosystem. So the Pact for Skills uh, was officially launched by Commissioner uh, Schmidt and uh, my Commissioner Breton on uh, uh, the 10th of, uh, 10th of November 2020. Uh, that's when uh, uh, the first three uh, large-scale uh, uh, skills partnerships were also launched in various uh, uh, ecosystems. So, how, as I said, how does this, uh, how does this uh, Pact for Skill work through uh, large-scale skills partnership that seek to regroup uh, entities and actors from private, public organization, social partner, education, training provider, towards concrete commitments and concrete objectives to uh, advance the upskilling and reskilling opportunities and create the next generation of future professional in specific uh, areas and sectors of society. So what we, we uh, the, the Commission also set up in support uh, of, uh, the, um, of the various partnerships that uh, were later, uh, later created throughout the years, was a set of uh, hub, hubs, uh, networking, uh, networking hubs, uh, to find partners and link uh, to existing and useful tools, knowledge hubs uh, for possibility to uh, have a webinar, um, to participate in webinars, seminar, uh, learning activities, uh, and uh, updates on the EU policies and, uh, and instruments, also sharing uh, uh, information and best practices and uh, guidance and uh, resources hub to uh, identify, to allow the partners to identify what are the possible opportunities uh, and financial possibility for, uh, coming from our, uh, from our uh, EU programs, uh, but also from, uh, from national programs, and facilitate the exchange between uh, members of the pact uh, and uh, the uh, national, European and uh, regional authorities. So, as I said, uh, a number of uh, partnerships have been created so far, uh, and they, uh, each partnership uh, that has, I think we are more or less, uh, more than 20 partnerships have been created so far, and uh, in our and all these partnerships uh, belong to one of the 14 ecosystems that uh, we, uh, we uh, let's say, uh, um, identify in the, um, 
in this strategy, in the industrial uh, strategy. So our ecosystem of, uh, um, of references, the aerospace and defense ecosystem that uh, um, takes into, that considers aircraft production, space manufacturing and services, defense product and technologies. And the first pact for skills uh, that, well, sorry, large scale partnership was launched uh, together with the launch of the pact on 10th of November, 2020 for the aerospace and defense, uh, um, which this uh, uh, this partnership focuses mainly on the uh, aeronautics and uh, defense dimension. And then most recently on 25th of October, uh, we also uh, managed to, uh, to launch a second uh, large scale skill partnership dedicated to space data, services and application. So this is really uh, the pact for skill for the space uh, sector that uh, of course uh, Milva is going to uh, to delve into a bit more. Uh, so I, I, I'm not going to, uh, to spend uh, my uh, a lot of time uh, uh, discussing about uh, the large scale skill partnership, but for us it's uh, it's uh, it's a matter of pride that we manage also to to launch this uh, this dedicated uh, uh, partnership. Uh, why? Uh, because we believe that uh, having the right set of skills for space is critical. It's critical because uh, we will we will uh, be relying on the on the skilled and equipped professionals in the future. There is more and more uh, the society and also the skill sector is under, undergoing profound and deep changes also linked to the green transition, the digital transition, new policy priority that are arising, for example, strategic autonomy, uh, the security and, uh, and uh, defense uh, dimension. Uh, and that's why we believe that uh, the large scale partnership, the space for geo uh, skill partnership is going to support us uh, uh, greatly into preparing the next generation of, uh, of the skilled professional that will allow us to meet the new policy priorities that I've listed just a few, but there are of course more uh, more uh, and new there will be new policy priorities that will uh, that will arrive in the next year for sure and then of course uh, the uh, element of uh, equal opportunity and inclusive is also another dimension because also to uh, ensure equality uh, um, also on based on on the um, yes on, on the uh, the split between um, the, the the workforce uh, who is working in the space sector I believe we need to to start working from uh, from the very beginning and from a young age uh, for you know to prepare uh, the uh, and uh, to prepare the, the future. So uh, so far, uh, of course, uh, uh, beyond uh, the uh, the pact for skills and uh, the um, the large scale skill partnership, what we also uh, the instruments that we have at use that come from our programs. Uh, the program that we follow are essentially uh, the Union Space Program. And here you see, um, maybe you're all familiar with that, and we have already launched uh, a number of, uh, of actions uh, that uh, address precisely the um, strategic action, uh, the, the Article uh, 6 of the um, of the of our Union Space Program, because skill is a critical component for the competitiveness and to ensuring a competitive and uh, an innovative Union Space sector. We have already uh, you have a, we have already a, a number of activities. Maybe you know about the Copernicus uh, Academies and Relays, uh, the EU SPA uh, Academy. Uh, now we are also uh, um, thinking of how to have these uh, uh, activities evolved and be more, uh, yes, more inclusive also and uh, incorporating not only uh, specific components but whole uh, space program. So this is uh, already something that we're working on and that we have uh, uh, at hand uh, as well as with the, with the 
preliminary mapping exercise on uh, uh, on equality uh, and uh, and that will allow we 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 launched last year a survey uh, on uh, an equality survey that uh, the results of this survey will of course have already uh, given us uh, good baseline data that we will be using for uh, policy development against the discrimination and for gender equality and uh, equal opportunities and then of course we have our uh, other uh, union programs the horizon um, and the erasmus plus uh, programs uh, and uh, well here uh, what, what i i listed just uh, some of the most recent uh, past uh, project that we uh, that we supported through horizon for example Space EU uh, and our space, our future that are uh, that have concluded, but that try to bridge the gap between uh, uh, upskilling and uh, yes, upskilling from uh, education and skill at a younger age. Uh, let's say, and then of course uh, uh, Astraios and Stars EU that are two uh, ongoing projects that uh, will uh, uh, carry uh, will carry on the work also for for the future with the uh, uh, constant uh, constantly uh, updating uh, our knowledge on uh, what is uh, uh, what are the uh, current uh, curricula that exist uh, uh, across europe and if uh, if these are also matching the needs from uh, uh, industry from uh, obviously a, a skill uh, perspective and then of course from uh, the erasmus plus program we have uh, the EO4GEO uh, blueprint for sector skills cooperation that was specifically focusing on uh, earth observation and geo uh, information uh, uh, sector and uh, the uh, universe uh, project which is a university uh, alliance that is uh, that regroups uh, seven uh, university located uh, across europe under the thematic of uh, of uh, of space to collaborate and uh, uh, draft curricula prepare curricula uh, shared among the uh, the students uh, and uh, and facilitating also the the mobility and the sharing of the best practices across students and across universities and uh, i have put there in in the middle the Space for Geo uh, uh, large scale skill partnership uh, on space data services and application, because I really see uh, the Space for Geo partnership as the trait d'union, as the, the link among and across all these university past and future, and also uh, th that will uh, allow us to continue this uh, upskilling and reskilling endeavor for the space sector also because of course space for geo takes over from the eo 4 geo uh, alliance but with a scope that is enlarged to the whole uh, downstream uh, um, downstream sector so not only focusing on earth observation but uh, opening up also to position navigation timing satellite communication and it will also be considering uh, the new policy trends, for example, stemming from the uh, most recently adopted space strategy for security and defense. So, voila, that, that's a, a little bit uh, the uh, policy context. Maybe we need to close. To give you. Okay. Yes, and, uh, and I'm you. finished. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mavi, for this um, um, comprehensive presentation and well-prepared uh, presentation. Uh, from my side, I have a quick uh, question um, for you. Uh, you mentioned you listed before um, a few EU policies, such as Green Deal, um, uh, Green Transition. Can you give us a concrete example on how this EU, uh, on how this Commission's initiative uh, for the Pact of Skills can support for the a specific uh, space strategy? Uh, yes, so uh, 
so uh, uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not not really sure I understand your question uh, uh, because uh, so the the pack for skill it, it's a, it's a macro initiative that is implemented through uh, sectorial skills partnership. What we did is we have, as I said, introduced a number of hubs to facilitate the work of the partnership. Okay. But at the same time, what we what we do from a sectoral perspective is with the, the uh, with the program that we have at our hands coming from space program Horizon and Erasmus. <clears throat> we, what we try to do is to uh, is to uh, introduce actions as part of the work program that may support the work of the partnership. And of course, but then it's something that. Uh, and in fact, with, with Milva, we're constantly uh, uh, in uh, in um, in contact to have the objective of the partnership meet also our policy priorities. Of course, uh, the uh, the work that has been carried out by eo 4 j which is uh, will be continued through the partnership, was already very much focusing on uh, on the green and digital transition. So now the new uh, policies will have to be taken on board. And uh, that's why, for example, if I take the example of the of a security and defense dimension, which is something new for the Commission because we only recently adopted uh, the space strategy for security and defense, one of the actions that we put there on skills was the launch of the Space for Geo uh, uh, partnership. Why? Because we truly believe that the work of the partnership will be instrumental to mm -hmm. equip the next generation of space professionals also towards skills that are necessary to use space data services and application and apply them to the security and defense. Dynamics. For defense purposes, yes. Voilà. Thank you very much, Mavi, and uh, looking forward for the um, uh, debate with others, with the rest of the speakers uh, later. Uh, please stay with us. Uh, to continue now, I would like to underline that um, I, our network, Nereus, is focused, as you know, mainly on the use of space technologies, services, software uh, that can benefit citizens. And this is why Nereus was part of this um, big EU training initiative, EO4GEO. Uh, and now uh, we would like to uh, learn more about the continuation of this project, this alliance, this space for geo large scale partnership. Uh, and for this reason, we have with us the coordinator uh, and the director of uh, the, the, the coordinator of the of Sp uh, space for geo and the director of GSEC, um, Milva Carbonaro, to tell us more about this partnership and its objective. The floor is yours, uh, Milva. Thank you very much, um, um, Margarita, for having me here and uh, for the nice introduction. And thanks also to Mavi for having uh, provided a very good context for my presentation. I'm kind of trying to share my screen and let me um, just tell me if you can see it. Because, we can uh, see it. And also okay. to remind to all speakers, please stay on time. So we have enough time for discussion at the end. So 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, good morning, everybody. Again, from my side, I'm Milva Carbonaro. I'm uh, the coordinator of the Space for Geo Large Scale Partnership in the name of my organization, GSIG, of course. And uh, um, today I'm going to tell you a bit uh, uh, about the evolution from the O4G pro uh, project, which was uh, mentioned before, both by Mavi and Margarita, and uh, the current uh, uh, Space for Geo Large Scale Skills Partnership. Just quickly, O4G, as mentioned, was a, um, a so called blueprint. Uh, uh, sectoral Skills Alliance launched uh, as the first wave in uh, uh, 2018. Twen uh, first wave of these uh, kind of projects addressing specific sectoral needs of uh, identified strategic sector. So space geoinformation was uh, one of the first sector identified to be addressed by a blueprint project. And that was the framework where uh, EO4GEO was launched. Uh, it was a very huge, big project necessitating uh, a coordinated, um, let's say, a distributed approach to coordination. So GZIG was the 
general co uh, coordinator, but uh, um, it is my pleasure to mention that uh, um, K11 was the scientific and technical coordinator and Salzburg University, who is attending here uh, today, um, was the coordinator for education and, and training in that project with Climate Peak coordinating the, uh, let's say, um, um, dissemination, uh, dissemination and follow-up activities. Um, the, the, the project covered a very comprehensive set of activities uh, which are being now uh, leveraged by uh, the space for geo uh, large-scale skills partnership in order to have them uh, continued but also expanding to uh, new areas of the space economy and also to new possible possible actions it was already composed by a huge network of organization 25 uh, uh, official members uh, um, let's say contractual partners plus more than 50 associated partners and uh, um, from academia and companies uh, um, research institutions and so on many of them also co belonging to the copernicus academy network that Mavi mentioned before um, they, um, at the end of this project, uh, um, before as a, as a trade union, let's say, as a transition towards the large scale skills partnership, uh, some core partners of EO4GEO and uh, uh, some other stakeholders joined together under a, a, a specific network agreement to uh, uh, launch the EO4GEO Alliance, which had as objectives exactly those fixed in the sector skills strategy to be released at the end of your 4G project. This because uh, the blueprint projects, uh, which were uh, highly uh, um, demanded, let's say, by specific sector directly by the reference uh, directorate general uh, in the European Commission, had uh, as main uh, goal the one to release a sector skills strategy, which could allow to have a skills development in the short, medium and long term. Um, in the objectives of the Alliance, it was already clearly stated that we wanted to go to the constitution of the large scale skills partnership that, as mentioned by Mavi, was officially launched by the Commission, uh, namely uh, with official communication by DG Employment and DG, Defi, uh, DG Defis on the 25th of April this year and which is complementary with the work of the other large scale skills partnership originally uh, found, uh, launched in November 2020 in, in the aerospace and defense ecosystem, but also with other large scale partnership existing, in particular the digital LSP and those large partnership representing other vertical sector, in particular automotive, tourism, health and many others. Of course, uh, uh, the partnership endorsed uh, as key objectives the objectives of the sector skill strategy released at the end of your 4 geo but uh, um, encompassing not only Earth observation and geoinformation, as Mavi, Mavi mentioned, but also all the other components of the space program. So also positioning, navigation and timing and uh, um, satellite communication. You can see here at a glance which are the main strategic objectives uh, of the sectoral skill uh, um, partnership. And uh, uh, you will see later on that these are uh, matching with the specific commitment that the partnership, uh, uh, let's say, set in its uh, constituting position paper that we call manifesto. So, um, uh, not repeating what's said, um, in uh, the space downstream and geo-information sector, the Space for Geo partnership was also uh, to raise awareness uh, about uh, uh, the, uh, let's say, opportunities for uh, economic growth and uh, uh, job increase provided by the space uh, economy, the space sector, and so attract in this way new talents to professions uh, that maybe are, are not so well recognized uh, among the wider public, but which has a strong growth pro potential uh, in the next decades. Um, the partnership already counts around 50 members from 14 European countries. The kind of composition is more or less the same as, as in the Blueprint projects, 
so we have public agencies, academia, vet providers, companies, sectorial associations, but also regional authorities, I must say. And they are, of course, open. It is, of course, open to all key stakeholders in the sector because the main, one of the main purposes, as mentioned by Mavi as well, of this partnership in the willingness of the Commission is to put together uh, all key stakeholders in order to pull efforts and join join them um, towards, uh, a, a, let's say, a coordinated approach to towards skills development. Uh, this is, uh, at a glance, uh, uh, the, the, the list of mem current members of the space uh, for geopartnership. Actually, it is not complete. This is the list as it appears in the manifesto of the partnership. Others joined in the meantime since the, its constitution. Uh, so uh, you can imagine there are more here. And uh, um, it is, as I mentioned, open to everybody. In the manifesto, um, the partnership, all partnership actually, has to, uh, have to fix, to set the general high-level commi commitments of the partnership and other more specific commitments. As general commitments, you, you can see these are very much in line with the uh, key EC policies in terms of training and education, but also uh, uh, in addressing skills needs. And uh, uh, of course, uh, they uh, encompass ensuring continuous exchange and cooperation among uh, key stakeholders, uh, um, establish a, a shared understanding of, of which are the skills needed, which, which is the amount of skills we are speaking about, and uh, um, what are the capacity requirements to really achieve a successful uh, sorry, uh, there is someone uh, uh, intervening privately, I guess. He is of muted. course. I muted. Yeah, okay. okay, sorry. And then, uh, of course, uh, knowing this, knowing the skills needs, uh, one of the, the, the key objective is to bridge the skills gap and the mismatching in order to have uh, an improved user uptake of the space data services and application. Specific commitments that, uh, uh, as I was mentioning before, are uh, reflecting the, the strategic objective of the sector skill strategy are to have a constant monitoring of uh, the occupational supply and demand in order to identify which are the skills required and uh, uh, provide feedback to the, uh, to the sector on the evolving needs. So also anticipating needs according to the evolution from a so societal, sorry, and technological point of view and economic point of view. Uh, another key point is to have uh, um, uh, in perspective a, a, a kind of a um, one-stop shop portal where candidate learn learners can have access to the different uh, uh, training and uh, learning opportunities and uh, be guided in order to define their own personalized, customized path for upskilling and reskilling. Also, there, there is also a, a, an issue, uh, say a point to, uh, of attention to address in order to uh, ensure access to quality training. So the quality of the training, it's a, a very, para, a very paramount important in this field. Um, we want to penetrate the other different value chains, uh, the other vertical sector, and this uh, is, uh, let's say, in line with the uh, collaboration which are already ongoing with other large-scale skill partnership in other sectors, and also encourage, of course, the citizens' engagement in, uh, at, a, uh, at wide, let's say, using also citizen science practices, but mainly to attract new talents and raise awareness about the, pot the potentiality of the sector, as I was mentioning before. At the moment, uh, the partnership is working on the, uh, defining a work plan with concrete actions and target KPIs, also in terms of concrete numbers, uh, in order to achieve these uh, uh, gen um, general and specific uh, uh, objectives and commitments. We have, uh, uh, we don't want to work in isolation, and so you must consider Space for Geo uh, as a kind of framework where the, all the different initiatives come together and really collaborate, not to duplicate for uh, efforts, but really to, uh, let's say, join forces for skills development. You can see here num number that 
uh, few. Uh, of course, uh, the Universe uh, European um, University Alliances, with whom we have close and constant con uh, consultations, and we participate in their stakeholders' consultation, and we will probably sign a memorandum of understanding for collaboration soon. We collaborate uh, with the Australius project and we participate in their advisory board, for instance. We collaborate please, with Stars please. EU. I'm closing, I'm closing, yeah. Uh, and uh, um, the digital large scale skills partnership. Um, these are in a, a shortly the benefit of joining the, the this kind of partnership to be part uh, and have the possibility to set up strong trans transnational consortia to participate in tenders and procurement have guidance in access uh, to funding opportunities and of course being visible in all the channels of the partnership so said that i leave you with uh, uh, um with the um, uh, screenshot of the uh, website which is under uh, construction still from a, a look and feel point of view and here you have the references to reach out to us and to uh, be in, in let's say in constant uh, contact and uh, keep uh, uh, the pace of uh, the, the information in particular also through our uh, Twitter account so thank you very much uh, for uh, your you. attention and I'm available for any question Thank you, Milva. Please share also your reference in the chat and the website of Space for Geo for, yeah, for the doing. participants. Stopping sharing, I don't know if I'm. If it's, I it's, it's done. It's done. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, great, great. Thank you very much for sharing this important information in this uh, great partnership. Uh, I have a question for you uh, before we yeah. move on to the next uh, presentation. It's, uh, it's from our audience, from Sara Rastakis. She asks, can international associations like Euravia, the European Aerospace Association, Association, who have the same aim, education in aerospace, can also join these initiatives? Yes, for sure, for sure. Yes, you are very welcome to join because, as I was mentioning, uh, Space for Geo, uh, in, uh, it's it's uh, final. Let's say. Uh, vision is to become a kind of umbrella network, not an organization, an umbrella network where all the different initiatives and also association working in the field comes together, maybe also promoting joint projects. Uh, I didn't mention in my presentation to be on time, but already some projects have been promoted uh, within uh, the partnership and many new members joined uh, also other sectoral association. Uh, we have, for instance, uh, um, um, the Bavaria Association, uh, we have uh, um, other associations more focused uh, on uh, industry for satellite communications. Uh, oh, mm, I mean, it, it's really the, the key, uh, one of the key uh, guiding uh, principles which are endorsed by all members by signing the network agreement is the, the, mm, the principle of uh, collaboration, uh, transparency, uh, and uh, also confidentiality, of course, because we will never be asked to share confidential information. But really, uh, um, the point is uh, not to duplicate efforts by to join forces so, so to yes, be complementary yes and to uh, yes 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 that's uh, it. Th thank you, Milva, and thank you also, Sara. Euroavia is, um, uh, we also have a memorandum, memorandum of understanding between Areus and, uh, and Euroavia. And thank, thank you very much for supporting our webinar. So, uh, I, I will leave you to both to continue your discussion bilaterally and see if uh, Euroavia joins uh, this great uh, um, uh, initiative. Uh, then I would like to move on to our next speaker. Uh, it's one of our Nereus members. Um, um, it's Professor uh, Tandeus Ull from the Malopolska region. And today he represents uh, his region and also his university, Akeha. Uh, it's the University of Science and Technology in Krakow. I had the pleasure in May uh, to, be, to participate there as a speaker in a very nice uh, motivated conference they had uh, organized for education and training. Um, uh, Professor Ull uh, serves as head of mechanics and robotic and robotics um, as as the head of mechanics and robotics 
uh, in the department. Um, and Ageha, it's also one of our members, one of our associate members. So we have a full member, uh, who, which is Malopolska region, but Ageha, it's um, also our associate member, the university. Uh, most importantly, Ageha, when I was there in May, I was impressed by the number of the EU uh, training education initiatives um, they were taking uh, uh, part in. Uh, for example, uh, I know they are in Universe, uh, but also in many others. And there, uh, I would like, uh, this is why I invited uh, Professor Tandus uh, today uh, to share with us um, what is the situation uh, in Malopolska. Uh, and of course, later on, uh, to engage him in the discussion with the, with the rest of the speakers and to, uh, to listen to his views as the regional representatives for this um, uh, for, for this initiative such as space uh, for geo uh, professor uh, tadus i would say uh, tadus the floor is yours and uh, uh, please um, you can share your presentation with us thank you do, do you see uh, my presentation yes 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 okay that's i will give a very short presentation uh, that's, uh, I am now the director of uh, Space Technology Center at my university. Also, we are the partner of Universex that I will give you a uh, few words about the universe, what we are doing and what is our goals. Because in the two previous presentation, the universe was mentioned as an initiative for the education uh, and also to give the skills for young people uh, for the space sector. That's a few words about the Małopolska, that it's, uh, uh, Małopolska is located on the south of Poland. The capital of Małopolska is Krakow. That was a former capital of the country that we have uh, 31 universities in the region. The biggest and the oldest is at Jagiellonia University. There is a two technical universities. We have 3,500,000 inhabitants. Uh, Krakow is approximately uh, 860 and uh, 200 students that we cross a million uh, because of the students. That is uh, my university that was a 100 years old university, uh, but also we have the new uh, infrastructure like uh, the center of the IT, uh, center of energy, center of materials. That's uh, we have the laboratories, that we have the computing center, we have uh, in, in this. Uh, computer center, we have one of the most powerful computer in the world, uh, Athena, uh, that we have also some other laboratories equipped with the newest uh, equipment. Uh, the features uh, and facts of our university, we have about 25,000 students, also uh, 4,000 uh, staff, uh, then the teaching and research staff is uh, almost 2,000. That we have uh, 16 fields of uh, research, uh, 50, uh, uh, 75 specialization and 500 uh, laboratories. Uh, among these laboratories, we have Space Technology Research Center. The mission of the center is uh, undertake research and education in the fields of the new space. Uh, that's also to uh, focus our academic uh, academics uh, around the space technologies because before uh, at almost each faculty uh, they are deal uh, with uh, uh, space technology, but it was not organized in the one organization. The main uh, research fields are signs of signatures. Uh, this is uh, related to IT, processing information into the knowledge, materials and structures for space, space resources. That's uh, Margarita uh, uh, indicate the conference. The conference was on the space resources, how to explore and how to exploit uh, the uh, space resources, energy systems for space, and which is uh, very important for us, 
and we take care for that. It's a life science uh, for space. We have in this area several projects. Among them, I should uh, mention Universec um, with uh, seven partners and Bayon Universec. This is a, a project with the same consortium, but related to the research. Uh, that is uh, our uh, scientific board, a very international scientific board. Uh, that is an uh, initiative uh, that we uh, are in, in this. Uh, uh, year uh, that it's also we have the strong cooperation with uh, industries and agencies uh, in the space we have also on board the people uh, uh, that they uh, help us to develop the uh, space technology and participate in the uh, European and world uh, uh, activities uh, in the space yeah that is our new laboratories uh, I would like to, to mention that we, we, we are building the lunar environmental simulator, which will be very unique in uh, Europe and also in the world. Uh, that is our new building. The current state of the building is almost finished. We will move the, it was, uh, it was uh, planned to move uh, end of March, but we will move the March next year because of some disturbances of this uh, of this uh, invest, uh, investment also we are building the the ground station uh, to have communication with uh, satellites that's uh, that's i said if i said before we take care for the life science for space that we have the habitat main means a space based simulator uh, for isolated uh, studies. We are doing a lot of research on that. Also, we are uh, organizing the uh, stratospheric uh, campaign uh, with a balloon. There is uh, one example of the of the uh, of this. We have uh, also some uh, life science uh, life science uh, uh, projects uh, that is some example of of this project this is uh, one of them this is a mission to arctic uh, for the uh, finding the the the, the uh, early stage of the life uh, that also uh, can be uh, used for the uh, space uh, space uh, uh, testing we have a lot of uh, activities of our students. Uh, this is a European rubber challenge with, that our students won uh, that uh, this year and uh, last year. And also we won the uh, Canada uh, rubber challenge in Calgary, very, very high um, in the ranking, uh, the competition of the of the rovers uh, for uh, students uh, also we uh, won the over the the justin moon challenge in colorado uh, school of mine in united states this year the aim of this competition is to build the system for transporting regolits on the uh, moon area and also we are organizing the meetings with uh, guests. There is some examples. We host uh, Robert Zubrin uh, this year and Lesson uh, Johansson uh, from United States, but also from Europe. Uh, that uh, Professor Enrico Stoll was our guest this year. That also we are doing a lot of research in space medicines. This is a one uh, one of the example uh, project. This is uh, predicting on unconscious in astronauts during the missions. Very important that we are uh, doing uh, research in centrifugal center in uh, Poland. That it's also some other some other. Uh, a project multi-sensing in extreme conditions. This is in cryogenic uh, 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 chamber. Uh, that also we uh, organize the satellites, CubeSat missions uh, 
with uh, partners. Also, we uh, participating in the um, moon experiments. Uh, that we won the, uh, the 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 payload in the uh, lander of the Luna uh, from Orbital Space Company. And Professor we, Ull, I need, I need uh, maybe you can shorten your presentation because yeah, we need that to. That is um, another project. That is a presentation about the universe, uh, universe 1.0. We had the five partners, but uh, now we have the seven partners. They are all these seven partners are uh, here. This is a coordinator to Lewis University. Uh, that it's a University of Luxembourg, University of Düsseldorf, uh, Lula uh, University, uh, University of Namur and Tor Fergata uh, from Rome, Italy. Uh, that it's a uh, goal of our our uh, uh, universe uh, uh, project. Uh, that it's. Uh, uh, that is our main subject, space for Earth and society, space sustainability, space settlement and resources, and also a deep space exploration. Uh, that is, uh, this is uh, a six disciplines which we provide uh, for the students, mainly science and engineering, but also medicine and health, humanities and social uh, science related to the space, yeah. That it's uh, uh, four sections: uh, uh, air, social, social, and environmental challenges. And as you see, this is a very wide, uh, wide uh, understanding of the space sectors that we are providing the courses uh, for the students. Uh, also, that we have a wide range of the partners. Uh, the, the institutions, but there is a partners which we have in the universe uh, project. There is an academia, even there is a Nereus uh, here, uh, and uh, then then we provide the uh, comprehensive uh, curricula uh, that is a section of the, for instance, science and engineering and. Uh, space settlement and resources that's uh, are such a courses which we provide we also provide the new master program at our university related to the uh, universal consortium and tu berlin which is uh, our partner for the years and uh, that's its uh, uh, courses in upstream downstream and space engineering for medicines that it's a uh, uh, the scheme of these uh, courses, uh, this is a four semester uh, master uh, course for the students and all these courses has uh, five stars. What it means, means that it's, they include the uh, active learning technologies, we organize for the students conferences, organize for the students summer schools, short courses. Uh, and so on. Digital content, all courses are digitalized. Uh, that the uh, courses are interdisciplinary and with uh, that provide the courses in uh, many languages, uh, European languages. And also uh, the courses I provide in the cooperation means that each course have uh, the partners from uh, the universities from the uh, consortium. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ull. Thank you, Tadus, for this great presentation. Uh, for those who are not aware, Ankeha is a role model university in Europe. Um, they are focused in uh, all of these technologies that the uh, professor uh, mentioned before. I had the pleasure to visit the, the university and the infrastructures there, and I was impressed. It was the first time that I re I saw a university. Um, it, it looks like a space station, to give you an example. And uh, uh, maybe in the follow-up, I will share with you some, some photos. So it's really great that we have uh, this university in our network. And also this university is part of these EU initiatives. Uh, professor, before uh, stay a bit with us. And I also have a question for you. 
Uh, given your role as a regional stakeholder and your involvement in these European initiatives, what advantages do you think that these initiatives can bring to your regions, can bring to the, to the future generation? The, in my opinion, in education, is, uh, mobility is important, that mm -hmm. the compare, uh, cooperation between regions gives such a possibility uh, to send the students to the stakeholder of the project or to other university. That is our goal also to, uh, to give them the skills which are the interdisciplinary, multi multicultural, uh, because in the space sectors, these skills are very important. It means that it's such a global uh, view on the education and, and uh, giving the skills for the young generation is important for the, uh, for the, for the sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tadus. Uh, please stay with us for the final part of the webinar for the discussion. Now, I have the pleasure to, to welcome um, our last speaker, uh, Mirko Mazzarolo from the, the Veneto region. Uh, he's a regional representative of the region in Brussels, and he is the point of contact also for, for Nereus. Uh, I, 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 when I was making the plan of the agenda, I thought that um, what if we bring into the discussion uh, another project that works for education uh, um, and training, a part of it on capacity building skills, but it's under a, uh, under a different EU program. What is the added value to this uh, to the whole to this whole uh, EU sphere? Um, and for that, I would like to ask from uh, Mirko um, to present the project satisfaction. Uh, also explain what is the abbreviation Mirko and uh, uh, what's the role of the capacity building skills in such such SDI faction. <laughs> Thank you. The floor is yours. Ah, I will share the video. Give me one moment. Yes, thank you, Margarita, for the introduction. The... Yes, as uh, have the role of coordinator, and uh, as Veneto Region uh, is leading the, the project, uh, it's a pleasure for me to share you some impression on this project that we started. And thanks a lot to Nereus, because we don't. To, uh, I want really to underline that this kind of project is possible if there is the cooperation uh, among the regions and uh, in a network like in Arayos, it was possible to bring the benefits of other experience like EOPKL and think about what was the future of the network and the needs of the members of the network and uh, what we built was this project satisfaction that is can you see the data. slides can you see yes. the slides yes Okay, uh, let me know where I have to move on uh, the... You can go to the second immediately, so... Uh, because the, the... Okay, satellite data and spatial data infrastructure for an evidence-based regional governance. I like also to see this uh, title as a satellite SDI that are the spatial data infrastructure for uh, geo information and uh, all the services that uh, regions and uh, local authorities provide for the land uh, uh, planning and uh, other uh, management. Um, as uh, then fact and action, because uh, what we realize uh, uh, at our meetings in Reus, that's uh, at the uh, regional and local level, um, the issue is to provide a service internally. So uh, what forced us to find uh, another kind of uh, uh, program like Interreg Europe was the need to uh, build uh, and uh, uh, um, this cooperation in order to uh, focus on capacity building of the regional and the local authority staff. Because uh, it's a question of uh, uh, learning by doing but uh, Interreg Europe uh, has this focus that uh, uh, it's on all the priorities of the European Union. So the smart, the green, connected, social, citizens, governance. And uh, uh, the, it's a cooperation program. And of course, uh, 
the, the main objective is to reduce disparities among regions. So we, we thought if in the use of satellite data, there are some partners that are, um, uh, let's say, better, the, the experience can be shared with the other partners. That's why uh, this initiative started. The, um, it works, uh, as probably you already know, okay, that we are living now in the European Week of Regional Cities, so probably you already know how the Inter Europe program work, but uh, very shortly, the, we start from a, a learning process where first, there is this kind of exchange of experience that uh, leads to the increased capacity of people. So what's the, the main goal is to uh, work on staff, internal staff, but then it's not only individually that we have to see this progress, but uh, at organization, organizational level. Because uh, at the end, uh, what we are working on is the policy instrument of the regions. In, uh, in this uh, project, uh, um, we have uh, almost all members of the Nereus network, but uh, also a municipality from Riga. Municipality of Riga joined the, the consortium. And all partners are working different policy instruments. The Veneto region has a focus on land management, but Carpaccia in renewable energy sources, Azores in energy transitions, Sviluppo Basilicata in training and education, and that is the point because they are working on uh, what we are talking about today, and uh, uh, Valonia in flood prevention, and uh, uh, Riga in urban sustainable development, and Occitana region in climate change adaptation. So uh, now we are identifying the different domain of satellite data application and uh, uh, studying and uh, perform a baseline context uh, analysis to start uh, from the, the moment we are working now and see after uh, four years of uh, work how we will uh, join our objectives. And uh, it will come through different uh, moments of learning. The, the, the first will be a boot camp organized in Treviso in, uh, in November, uh, where partners will uh, share ideas and uh, uh, methodologies to go through all the process and uh, talk how, how we can see also what is a, the best practice in our project and uh, what would be the best for sharing them in uh, uh, all Europe, because uh, one uh, added value of Interreg Europe program is that they have a um, policy learning platform where in case we have showcases and uh, uh, good inputs, all Europe will benefit from this project. But uh, focusing on uh, training education, uh, we have uh, Regione Basilicata, partner involved in the project uh, through the um, instrumental body Sviluppo Basilicata that will work on the regional operative uh, program to test the training and the capacity building program. So it, it will be a, a training uh, program, introduction to satellite remote sensing of environment for regional and local authorities. And uh, uh, they will, they already run this kind of uh, training, but they have to uh, focus on a, a modular and uh, uh, structured uh, training uh, program to develop in uh, with the final uh, objective uh, to create uh, growth and jobs because that's the, the what the Europe program also required. Uh, if we work on a policy instrument, we have to develop it, that. So it depends on what we choose, but in this case, a region uh, wants to work in, a, uh, um, in the program, the regional operative program. The, the outcome has to be at least uh, a growth, uh, development of the region in terms also of jobs. And uh, that's why uh, the, this kind of um, project can have a lot of synergies with the initiative we talked about before, platform, and uh, about uh, and 
for identifying also the skills, because that's also the skills needed for the regional and local authority staff. That was the what was more important to underline. They, so just to conclude, okay, will this kind of project last four years? We have a core phase where we exchange the experience we learn from each other, and then the follow-up phase where we capitalize what we, we have got. It will be, of course, a pleasure to share with the, uh, the platform and uh, the participants the result of the project, but that will be in 2027. Thank you very much, Mirko. Thank you very much for the, for the presentation. Uh, shortly, I will share with you uh, the, the link to the project and the video because we filmed, we were very lucky to film the video of the project in Venice where the kickoff uh, took place. Um, and you will be able to 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 meet all partners through through the video. Uh, before I I ask some questions to all speakers, I would like maybe to ask from them to open their cameras, and also to ask the audience as well as the speakers if they if they have any question on the presentations we heard so far. We listened to many different initiatives. Uh, it was nice also to have another AU program to be introduced in the in the webinar and see what they do in terms of capacity building skills. Um, anyone can take the the floor and ask the question from from the side of the speakers at least. Maybe just a comment from my side on the, yes. the presentation by by Mirko. Uh, I believe that uh, the the, pro the Interreg project he was uh, presenting is exactly one of the example that uh, on how to really uh, let's say um, stream towards the regional uh, economic tissue, let's say. Um, innovation and uh, how to um, um, how training and education initiative and uh, um, materials can be used to 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 reach uh, stakeholders and potential learners at a regional level. So. Um, ideally, projects like this interreg should be. Uh, um, should populate uh, a set of projects similar in the different regions, maybe leveraging on the results of European cooperation projects. To make an example, uh, in the EU4GEO project, uh, we, um, that as other blueprint projects has to demonstrate the impact at a regional and national level, one of the potential impact could be, could have been that uh, uh, regional projects like this one are um, let's say using, reusing some of the materials, some of the tools and so on. So th this kind of projects are, are very much welcome. And uh, maybe you already managed to, to um, reuse something indirectly from your Forgio through Basilicata and, and so on, because, you know, we had uh, an important partner there as well. That Valerio, Professor right? Valerio. Yes, uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, indeed, indeed it's true. And uh, what, uh... I really want to underline again is that we are trying to get also from this project uh, a more tailored uh, uh, training and education for staff because uh, it's something that we realized we have a quality in the providing services internally, but there are not enough staff. So what is really needed is uh, uh, more education and training. Yeah, the famous point of uh, issue of upskilling current workforce that is addressed yes. by the path for skills exactly yeah Um, of course, we examine all these issues at the regional level because we implement these webinars in the framework of, of Nereus, but I'm sure the same issues are, are also at the national level and in, in different in other aspects. Um, I would like to ask uh, one question um, uh, for the pact of skill, for, for skills. 
since the webinar is uh, is is uh, dedicated to to this thematic, um, and considering the fact that uh, we are talking about regions, I would like to ask how the Pact for Skills can ensure uh, its support for upskilling and reskilling to the specific needs and challenges of different regions. And uh, what role also um, should regional uh, customization play in achieving su successful outcomes? So uh, that I would, I mean, to have a full, a fully, a full answer on this question, I would need the EU side, also the regional side. Um, what kind of use can 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 you share on on that? We know that regions have different dynamics. Not all regions are the same. Uh, Veneto, for example, has a they have a strong team in uh, SDI, the spatial data infrastructure. I don't know if this I don't know if another region shares such high. Um, uh, strength. Uh, uh, po our police regions are very strong in the development of software, space software. So how how this pact of skills can ensure a, a harmony <coughs> and can support this um, uh, the, the skill capacity skills development in yeah, different Maybe I regions. will uh, I will uh, yes. I will start and then I will uh, give the floor to my please, colleagues Mavi, to continue please. because obviously as I uh, explained. The Pact for Skill is an umbrella initiative, so which is implemented through uh, sectorial skills partnerships. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my uh, advice, and uh, I mean, I know that Nereus was already uh, a uh, collaborating and a an, uh, partner of the eo 4 geo Alliance. So my uh, advice to organization, not only like Nereus, which is an association, but specific regions, I would encourage them, especially those that have a strong uh, uh, space, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, endeavor uh, as part of uh, their stakeholders uh, that are part of the uh, regional ecosystem, I would encourage them to join the Pact for Skills and to join the uh, uh, Space for Geo Alliance, uh, the Space for Geo Partnership, because this is where they will have access to, uh, first of all, all the information, uh, the uh, exchanges with the coordinators. Uh, they will uh, they will be able to establish also um, cooperation with the other partners because one of the what I the message that I tried to pass in the uh, during my presentation is that skill is not for uh, for one entity on its own. There needs to be uh, a unity of uh, different actors. So it's not something that uh, uh, one company can do or one university can do. We need uh, everybody uh, to converge, to establish set uh, objectives and priority and work together to uh, towards achieving the objective. And this is also region is one of the actors that need to come in the picture when we want to make a difference in upskilling and risking with their uh, with their possible funding with their mobilization of uh, of contacts but they need to get involved in the partnership in the first place so i don't know mirva if you can uh, complement or you have something else to add yeah indeed uh, this is uh, this is the point i mean uh, um, when uh, speaking about the partnership and the fact that all key stakeholders must, must pull resources together it's uh, uh, among these uh, regional authorities are uh, of paramount importance in fact uh, uh, this is also demonstrated speaking generally uh, within the umbrella of the path for skills by the fact that also regional partnerships are promoted for skills development under the path for skills but for sure, in sectoral partnership like Space for Geo, the regional participation is of great importance. And uh, indeed, some regions, as I was mentioning, are already in in the in the network. Maybe from um, we don't have uh, by chance from Italy, but for sure, for instance, from 
Catalonia, which is a very active uh, region in the space sector. They are a member of the partnership, also Nav Navarra regions and others. Um, so that is the framework where the, uh, um, the regions can uh, really uh, reach out to, to other kind of stakeholders, to vet organization, for instance, to, uh, to academia, all stakeholders which, which can support the, uh, the design and the promotion of targeted uh, training uh, actions uh, and materials and so on. Um, also, from uh, uh, the point of view of the space economy, let's call it like this. Uh, what we uh, derived as information from previous studies, uh, uh, not only in Neo4G, but also in other initiatives, uh, like those that um, Mavi was mentioning before, is that, for instance, uh, uh, the, the, the provision of skills in the space downstream and geoinformation sector is particularly provided a very high level, I mean, at university level, maybe also post-university level, while there, uh, it is uh, understood that Anyway, there is a need to reach out also to secondary, to high school, to secondary school, so to a different level. And this, uh, uh, this framework of collaboration is completely to be uh, set, no, I don't say from scratch, because there are some relevant and important initiatives. Also, the so-called ETIS uh, in, in, uh, Superior Inst Training Institute that we have some in Italy, uh, are focusing, for instance, there is one in Turin, I guess, uh, if I well remember, are focusing on space domain. But still, there is a lot of work to be done. We had to make you an example, and then I shut up. Uh, we, when we had to submit a new blueprint project, and we are currently waiting for the results early May, um, we struggled uh, to find vet providers who knew about the, the space uh, downstream sector. When you speak in general to these vet providers, space is something more related to lunar exploration or things like that. They completely don't have, uh, uh, in general, awareness of the potentiality of the economic growth expected of the potential for jobs, for professions by their students. So this is one of the key activities that we are trying to make to put in place in the partnership to really penetrate the vet system at a, a lower let's say <laughs> eqf level so not university but before uh, at the same time addressing also uh, continuous training for occupied people so uh, it is fundamental that uh, regions are part of this game also because in many countries, like in Italy, regions are those responsible for vocational training, for instance. Thank you, Milva. Uh, Tadus, please, uh, you can unmute yourself. You can take the floor. I unmuted you. Let's see. Can you hear us? Um, yeah, while he's uh, trying to unmute himself, maybe we can take okay. a comment. Okay, now, now. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, um, my point of view and our point of view at my university, that's the skills in the space should be interdisciplinary. Uh, yes. To give uh, the the students a choice, yeah, this yes. is and to engage we, more. We can... To engage more. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, we cannot concentrate only geodata or downstream, but we also have the specialists in upstream, the, the mission management, and so on. Because if we will have not such a specialist, we will have no data to to uh, play <laughs> with this data. Then. Then also in universe, we are dealing with uh, all aspects of the space, space economy, space law, space health, and so on and so on. Uh, to give the skills more interdisciplinary. That's my remark on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tadus. Thank you for, for your comment. Mirko, you wanted to say something? But as a region, I can say that uh, the interest for the ski partnership is there. I know that the region has already joined the uh, uh, tourism textile 
partnership because in our region uh, economically they are very important and uh, on space there is a lot of interest now so i think uh, soon there will be a possibility that the region join and i hope thanks also for the satisfaction project because we are working on the same topics and i hope the they understand how important paths. We, we will yeah, cross paths. I was in sense. contact. I was in contact with the Department of Training and Education, uh, and they were just already checking uh, on uh, high school level if there was already uh, some institutes ready to kick off uh, a, a training. Um, last year they were not. Maybe they are talking now. So I hope in the coming months we will have some news. Yeah, in the in the project I was mentioning, we while inviting the vet or uh, the vet providers, uh, we uh, those who joined uh, said uh, clearly, look, uh, we are have no experience in this field, but it is promising, so we want to learn and we want to join to learn. So. Uh, indeed, uh, it, it's true that uh, you go to high school and maybe they are not yet ready, but we hope soon they, they could. I see there is a, 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 a question in the chat I by Sarah. I was going Sarah, to say that, yes. But yes. I don't, I, I'm not sure I understand exactly yes. the so question. She asks, she asks if we can, if someone, someone can join these initiatives uh, uh, as an individual, because, the, um, for example, uh, uh, space for geo members are either universities or or associations or companies uh, and she asks if 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 a person just individ an individual can join a, a initiative like that um well, in principle, yeah. it is not forbidden, of course, uh, although it was not really directly addressed, uh, this question while constituting the network. Of course, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, individuals, uh, either if they are teachers or students, uh, um, will have the advantages, at least in my opinion, uh, indirectly, I mean, as beneficiary of the actions which are put forward by, uh, by uh, legal entities, let's call it, them like this, no? Uh, uh, so, sorry, Mipa, so, uh, if Sara is present, uh, let me know. Maybe Sarah, she can explain. You, yes, mm. maybe, maybe, yeah, because I also now I read the rest of the, if this is what you meant, that let's say you as Sara can join this partnership alone and contribute Hi, also, everyone. because I read now that. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think uh, I confused many people with my question. But uh, basically, my question is that uh, in order to join the, these initiatives, you can join as associations, that's clear. But uh, on an individual level, let's say, for example, I want to contribute to this initiative and help this initiative. Uh, how can someone do that? Because, yes, we do have the Erasmus Plus projects and the academies, those are on the receiving end but i want to see how can a person help uh, and contribute to this as a person not as an association or something like that yeah so as a individual uh, based yes yes yeah uh well um as mentioning this there is uh, nothing um, which uh, uh, avoids for an individual to be involved um, and uh, uh, the contribution of everybody is, is, of course, very much welcome. I would say to, to get in touch and see which are uh, the, 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 the contribution you would like to put on the table, knowing that everything uh, in, the, in this partnership is, uh, at the moment at least, uh, on a voluntary basis. I mean, the partnership per se is not a project funded, uh, is an, an umbrella initiative where all the different parsons, partners uh, work together to promote uh, skills development also through uh, the, the, the look for funding in a different, a different level, European, national and whatever. Uh, but um, if a, a, an expert wants to contribute, I would say, why not? Yeah. Thank you so much. 
So, uh, does anybody else like would like to comment uh, or or has a question before we close the meeting? From my side, I would like to thank uh, deeply all speakers for their great presentations, uh, their participants. Uh, in the next days, um, maybe after the 25th of October, because as you know, the Copernicus for Regions event takes place at the European Parliament. So after the 25th, <laughs> after 25th, I will take care of all other activities and you will okay. have a follow up of the, of the webinar. Um, uh, but uh, the announcement also of the next education training webinar will, will come very soon. Um, thank you again very much and uh, wish, you a, wish you a very great uh, week. Thank you very much once more, Margarita, Thanks for having much. organized this and having given the partnership this great opportunity. Many for thanks. Sure. Thank you, Mavi. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.